If I were to tell you that I was a feminist, what would you think of me? Would you think that I'm pro-life, against easy access to or use of contraceptives and abortion? Would you think that I support the stay-at-home mom just as much as I support the working one? Would you think that I still believe in waiting until marriage for the man that I would dedicate my life to and who would do the same in return? Would you think that if a man held the door open for me or asked to take my luggage, I would say, yes, thank you, and think nothing else of it? Most likely, you said no to most of these questions. Most likely, you see feminists as women who condemn those who do any of the things that I just said. Most likely, you saw a woman complaining about men objectifying her. Or perhaps you saw yet another woman who claims to fight for equality between men and women, but who views herself above any and all men she comes across. This is how we view feminism today, and with good reason. But what actually is feminism? By definition, feminism is the advocacy of women's rights on the grounds of political, social, and economic equality to men. What does this mean? It means that wages for a job should not be higher for a man than they are for a woman for them doing the exact same thing. Women should be able to vote. A woman's intelligence should not be questioned on the very fact that she is a woman. This does not include, however, that women are better than men or stronger than men, or that marriage to a man is to be considered as a, cons ah, as a dependent station. These ideals, that men are inferior to women, and that everything a man does is to degrade a woman, are held primarily by a small group of feminists whose voices seem to rise above the rest. Now, before I continue, I would like to make it obnoxiously clear that not all feminists hate men. As a matter of fact, most don't. But it's no secret that women have been underestimated and shot down for most, if not all, of history. We have been rejected by society in multiple ways over the centuries, but still, we managed to persevere. We have fought not only for ourselves, but for other vulnerable groups in our world. We fought for the abolitionist movement, freeing those who had been oppressed for longer than we had. We fought for civil rights, showing the whole of our nation that every man is equal, no matter what he looks like. We fought for our suffrage, gaining belated respect from our peers on the political front. We fought for education, proving that women are as smart as men and that we deserve the same opportunities as them. We fought for music, paving the way for female musicians to be just as plentiful and successful as anyone else. We have fought for years and years, winning cause after cause after cause. In its most basic form, feminism is a noble pursuit. But today, that basic form is not easily recognizable. For the purposes of this talk, I would like to bring forward some of the ways that feminism has become clouded. Perhaps one of the most prevalent ways that feminism has completely turned around is in the fight against abortion. Today, there are 42 million abortions every year. In one day alone, there are about 115,000, and that's just in the United States. These children, these oppressed human lives, have needed our help since the beginning, but we've turned our backs on them, instead rooting for the other side because of our own selfish desires and need of acceptance. With the second wave feminist movement, two men came forward with the idea that abortion was a right, without which no other rights were relevant. These two men, Mr. Larry Later and Dr. Bernard Nathanson, approached the leaders of the feminist movement, presenting the idea that if women were to work, learn, and be promoted like men, they couldn't expect institutions to accommodate pregnancies. In 1973, Later's views were realized as abortion became legalized as a result of the Supreme Court case Roe versus Wade. We have been sold the lie that women need abortions to perform and work as equals to men, and that somehow we become completely useless when we get pregnant. Why have we allowed ourselves to believe that? I personally have been told that 
I can't be a feminist because I'm pro-life. I disagree, and I'm not the only one that thinks that. As a matter of fact, let me show you some of the women who fought on the side of the children. That the honorable term female physician should be exclusively applied to those women who carried on this shocking trade seemed to me a horror. It was an utter degradation of what might and should become a noble position for women. This woman, Dr. Elizabeth Blackwell, was the first female physician in the United States. The masculine element is everywhere, overpowering the feminine and crushing women and children alike beneath its feet. Let woman assert herself in all her purity, dignity, and strength, and end this wholesale suffering and murder of innocent children. Elizabeth Cady Stanton, one of the founders of the suffragist movement and the Seneca Falls Convention, the launching pad for feminism and our many movements. The persecutions on our court for breach of promise, divorce, adultery, bigamy, seduction, rape, the newspaper reports every day of every year of scandals and outrages, of wife murders and paramour shootings, of abortions and infanticides, are perpetual of man's incapacity to cope successfully with this monster evil of society. This, ladies and gentlemen, this wonderful quote that groups the now acceptable act of abortion with heinous crimes such as rape and murder was penned by none other than the face of the feminist and women's rights movements, Susan B. Anthony. These very influential feminists believe that abortion was a degradation of the feminist movement and womankind itself. So you cannot tell me that I can't be a feminist and be pro-life, because that's simply not true. By destroying a pregnancy, we are denying part of what makes us women and different from men, because Unless you're a seahorse, men can't get pregnant, and they can't give birth. We don't have to be exactly like men to be equal. We are equal, but we're different, and that's not a bad thing. Unfortunately, with the embracing of abortion, the views, another casualty of the modern feminist movement is that the views on traditional family have changed immensely. Where a family with married parents and more than two kids was commonplace in the early 1900s, now not a day goes by that we don't hear about families separating and falling apart. From the 1960s, the marriage rate has gone down from a whopping 72% to 51%, reaching an all-time low. And as the amount of marriages go down, so has the value of marriage. Of the percentage that does get married, about half of them get divorced. And I do believe that this has to do with the feminist movement, because a lot of feminists today have come to look down on marriage and other women that do marry. <laughs> That's where they're wrong. As an example, I turn to my own family. Now, my dad is a physician, and my mom is a stay-at-home mom. After 23 years and five kids, they're still going strong. Now, my mom didn't become a stay-at-home mom because she didn't have another choice. As actually, she has a master's degree from Michigan State University, and she worked while my dad finished his medical degree. She became a stay-at-home mom as a mutual decision to benefit the family. So why is that something to look down upon? With the crippling percentage of marriages, comes the even more crippling percentage on abstinence. Now, the numbers were not very high to begin with, as in the 1960s, the percentage of people waiting until marriage was 11%. But today, that number has dropped to an even more disheartening 3%. <laughs> the argument that feminists bring forth for this, as portrayed in the article, Boys on the Side, by Hannah Rosen, is that the casual hookup culture that has been replacing committed relationships is beneficial to women because it supports the independence of women in the workplace and in education. But in reality, with the casual hookup culture, we're creating an environment where it's acceptable for men to objectify women. 
So let's do the time warp again, back to what we used to be. Women who fought for equality, not superiority. Women who dressed and acted in a way that was to be respected, not objectified. Women and men who strive for a relationship, not a fling. Men and women who realize that there can be men and women and all the differences that come with that, and still we can be equal. I would love to be able to tell you that I'm a feminist and be respected for that, but I can't expect that from a world that's been privy to the misconceptions that plague our society and many feminists today. However, I can expect that from those who know and acknowledge what real feminism is. So before I leave, I have one last question for you. If I were to tell you that I was a feminist, what would you think of me now? Thank you.